Good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing well. I am one happy hammer today, purely because of the result, not the performance itself, but just because we won that game. I felt it was a huge one all week. I felt it was a really big game for West Ham. Um, and I've sort of got over the Newcastle game to some extent. There's still a little niggle in the back of my head about the Newcastle game. It's one of those now... We've won, so it's like that's in the past now. Four points from the last two games is a good return. You know, equal points from Man United. They play Liverpool today. Having to sort of cheer on Liverpool and Sheffield United doesn't feel great, does it? But that's what I'll be doing today because I want Chelsea Man and Man United both to drop points. So on one hand, I'm like, yay, uh, we've won. We're over the Newcastle one. But on the other hand, I'm like, I'm not really over the Newcastle one because imagine we held on. Imagine we got the win. We'd be well in our sights for European football. But nevertheless, we got the win yesterday. Big win. However, we did get away with it a little bit, didn't we? I'll say a little bit. We got away with it a lot yesterday. I thought we were absolutely terrible in the first half. Much better in the second half. Did we deserve the win? I'm not sure. I think a draw would have been a fair result. But there's been times where I maybe felt we perhaps could have got a bit more out of the game this season. And we did then. And there's been plenty of VR um, decisions going against us. So when some go in favour of us, I ain't going to complain. I don't believe. There's that old saying. that It's a myth, isn't it? Like referee decision VR. Bounce themselves out over the course of the season. Absolutely rubbish. That does not happen. Try to tell it to Wolves fans because I think they've probably been done the most by VAR, and that was before yesterday. Um, but I'm, I'm pleased with the win. But what struck a chord with me yesterday was when I was replying to the comments on the review, somebody said, Has this made anybody more confident for Thursday against Leverkusen? Definitely not. Not really. Um, I'd be lying if I said, yeah, do you know what? I think we're going to win on Thursday night after that win yesterday. Not so much. Anyway, right, let's see what you're all saying in the live chat. I don't have Charlie with me today. I'm missing my Charlie again. I, I, was picked, I said that last time, so I said that's a bit of an iffy comment, but I like it. I like it. So I'm missing my Charlie this morning. Adrian says, thought the Wolves goal should have stood. Don't think it was the massive error it is being made out to be. The Wolves striker was on Fabianski's toes virtually. Um, I think I think Adrian means it, sh it was right to be disallowed there. Sorry, Adrian, I'm having to guess. Contradictory. You're saying it should have stood, but you're saying the striker was on Fabianski's toes and it's not a big error. Um, I'm going to assume you mean it, it, um, it was right to be disallowed. Simon says Emerson's a good option um, at left attacking position, way more effective than Ward Pouse there. Yeah, I was impressed with us playing with the wing backs thing. Um, I, I was impressed with that. I quite liked it actually with Emerson left wing back, Kerswell left centre back, Johnson right wing back. It was forced upon us. I do think, like I said at the time, I thought it was a right decision. Now, when I saw Kerswell coming on, I thought we were just going to keep our formation, just push Emerson forward. We were actually switched and matched Wolves up. And I think we really benefited it, benefited from it. And I think both wing backs had a, a good second half. Um, DC says, glad we finally got a VA card, went for us. Ralph said, did not expect that result. I thought a draw at best. Mark said, it was a good performance from Ben Johnson. Michael said, match today doesn't support the disallowed goal. When we have a free kick in future, can we place a player in front of the keeper to obstruct his vision? And Brian says, wrong starting 11 tactics. Much better. I completely agree with that. The, the starting 11, I think, this is what I like about the build up show is that you can get like the real-time reaction from West Ham fans as to how we're feeling with the lineups coming out and stuff. And it was very sort of 50-50 yesterday. 50% liked it, didn't love it, liked it. Another 50% didn't like it, not hated it. So it was either quite liked it or quite disliked it. I was on the disliked it side because I'm no Michael Antonio and also because I would have liked to Ben Johnson to have started as well. Um, but second half, much improved, much improved. Andy says we've had goals ruled out by VAR for stupid reasons like Cornea away at Chelsea and a goal against Chelsea again, but home because a player was on the floor. Brian thinks Emerson penalty was harsh. Now, I don't have any complaints about that one, to be honest with you. I think I think it was a penalty. Um, my rule of thumb is always if it went for slash against West Ham, how would I feel? And for the Wolves penalty, if Caduce was running into the box and... I knew he came over, or Totti Gomez came over and tackled him like Emerson did. I'd want a penalty for West Ham, so I'm okay with it. Um, HM says, when was the last time we played without VAR? This is the problem, isn't it? By the way, um, I was I was going to check this, but I completely forgot. 
did they say that that was our 10th penalty conceded in the league this season? Our 10th? That That's, well, it didn't take a genius work out. That's one in three games. That is ridiculous. Is it really 10 penalties we've conceded? It does feel like we conceded a lot, but maybe I don't. All I'm going to say is I don't trust my hearing for understandable reasons. Michael says, love Johnson's attitude. Every time he comes on, he, he plays with a passion and love. Hughes, he says, what was Moyes doing with his starting lineup? How does he still not realise we're worse defensive when we sit back with 11 behind the ball? Matt says, yesterday's first half was unacceptable. It's tilted him more to Moyes going now. Seen that level of performance too often, and it stripped me of all confidence going into Leverkusen. It's funny, isn't it? I'm a bit like that, and I think this is what the subscriber was saying yesterday in regards to that question he posted. Does anyone feel more confident? We've won a game, but somehow you feel almost less optimistic uh, for the Bayer Leverkusen game on Thursday. George says, hopefully Bone is okay, because otherwise it's going to be a back five or Phillips starting on Thursday. Glenn says the switch to back three was forced upon, but worked. Irons disagrees. I think we saw two encouraging sides in a way. The first one is a resilient West Ham who can only concede one goal when playing bad. Then the West Ham who can knock the ball about and play. Artel says, good morning. I'll take the three points and roll on to Thursday. I'm really looking forward to Thursday. I will be I will be honest, because of because we've won, I feel whew, we've won that. We can part the Penny League now. I'm looking forward to today's football. I'm looking forward to watching both games. And um, won't watch the Chelsea game, but I watched the man you Liverpool won, then we've got Spurs, not the Forest later on today. I'm looking forward to both games. And like I said, I, I, I'm cheering on Sheffield United and Liverpool today. I want Man U and Chelsea to lose. I was pleased to see Brighton lose last night. Um, you never want to cheer on Arsenal. You never want to cheer on Liverpool, Sheffield United. But I'm cheering on those sides losing. That's what I'm cheering on. I want the best for West Ham. And I'm looking at the fixtures of everybody else. And I'm not going to lie, I'm getting optimistic we can get eighth and Conference League game for everyone. I know that. I get it. But I like it. I like the Conference League. Mark's asking, is five the way to go against Bayer Leverkusen, seeing as they also played that? Uh, we'll do our match preview. Um, maybe we'll go live um, later on in the week. Um, I'll see if Gonzo's available and we'll go live and we'll we'll get everybody's... We'll do like a community match preview. If people would like that, we've never done it before. We kind of have sometimes. But if people would almost like a community match preview where you guys give your thoughts and we can discuss it on the camera, like we're doing a build-up show, uh, let me know in this video. And if there's enough people that says, yes, please, then I'll do it. I'll, I'll speak to Gonzo. Infinitely says, we switch the three at the back. Surprise the girl didn't come on. Probably means under Moyes, he's out in the cold along with the rest of the substitutions. And Glenn says, the right decision to take off Suchek and Sufal. Um, and Glenn also says, Leverkusen haven't played a penalty league side. It won't be a walkover. Um, Chippy says we've conceded the most penalties. I'm sure it was 10 this season. I'm sure he said it was nine prior to the one that Emerson did. Tough. Uh, Brendan says it's not a shot we give away penalties when we constantly invite the opposition to play in our penalty booth. There's definitely a, a correlation there, isn't there? There's definitely something there. Hammer99 says not sure. Go back to you against Leverkusen. It's all right matching up against Wolves because we have a better quality of player. However, Leverkusen are a different challenge altogether. Paul says, glad we got three points, but it's much to do with Aitnuri going off injured as much. Yeah, they, they that killed Wolves yesterday. Absolutely killed them. But I will say, there was maybe 10, 15 minutes in the second half prior to Aitnuri going off, where I thought we were the better side. I thought we were the better team for the entirety of the second half, up until stoppage time when we, we, we started to recede, didn't we? We started to try and cling on to the win, which I get it. I just don't like it at times. Dean says, after reflection, I'd be upset if we had that one ruled out in the last minute. Obviously, yesterday was buzzing like all of us when it got checked, chalked off. Three points to three points, and we needed them. Hammerite says, sorry, Wolves, we don't feel guilty. We have had the same controversial decisions, one in our favour just for a change. That's a bit like me. That's me. I... I, I, I it's got to the point now where this is where VAR makes you almost like have ugly motives as a football fan because you're a bit like, well, it's about time we had one really and it's to hell with everybody else but like I said, VAR was meant to sort things out but all it's done is just talk changes from 
talking about the referee's incorrect decisions to, change, to talking about the VAR's incorrect decisions. That's all we're doing. All we've done is move the controversy from the referee to the guy in the VAR room at Stockley Park. It's still, there's still controversy. There's still incorrect decisions. It's just done via a monitor now. Um, right then, let's have a little look and see what the rest of you say. Keep your thoughts coming in. Um, infinitely same with like a community preview. That's one. There we go. Nine more to go. Ten. Ten's my, my number I've decided. Anthony, am I going to the second leg against Leverkusen? I'm hoping to. I am hoping to. It, it comes down to money, doesn't it? It's it's an overnight stay in London. Um, trains there, trains back. And my my last, I went to the Spurs game and the, the trains were, it's nobody's fault per se, but the trains get into London. There was a two hour delay. The train coming home from London was cancelled. It's just chaos at the moment. And, and then, you know, the hotel's 150 quid and whatever. It's just, it's pricey. I'm hoping to, though, Anthony. Uh, but we're in London on Thursday, this Thursday, for the away lag. I know you we think, yeah, it's in Germany, Gio. I'll talk about it in a minute. Give me two minutes, and then we'll we'll discuss it. Um, I almost got muddled up there. Matt saying, if Bowen is out for Thursday, any news on Bowen? In terms of Jared Bowen, there is no news yet. David Moyes didn't really give too much. He, Moyes isn't going to know at full time. He did get asked about it, but he's not going to know. First of all, he's not a medical expert. And second of all, yes, the injury to Bowen is not ideal, but there's still a game being played. And Moyes has to focus on that game. He can't focus on Jared Bowen for Thursday while the action's happening at Moyes. I expect today David Moyes' priority will be Jared Bowen for Thursday. But during the game, I don't want Moyes worried about Jared Bowen's hip. That's for the medical team to worry about. Mo Moyes' job is to worry about what's happening on the pitch in front of him and not with the players that's injured. However, I guess... The positive sides are positive um, sides of it is that he came back on. Sorry about the brightness. It's the sun. It keeps coming and going. I've adjusted the curtain so it was good, but the sun keeps dipping in and out. Anyway, problems were going live at 9 a.m., isn't it? But he came back on, which I found encouraging. And then when he went off, he just remained on the bench. So he didn't go down the tunnel or anything. But the bad things are when Moyes, Moyes said that he's had similar injuries in the past and he struggled to shake him off. And I'm assuming he's referring to as a player, by the way, not when he's today's age, 60, whatever old years old he is, and his wife knees him in the hip uh, for whatever reason. And Kansas said that happened to us. I had been mega pissed off, but we've had bad VAD our decisions. So we deserve that one. Hammer 99 says, I feel like Ward has grew into the game second half. Especially after the switch of back three, press more than he would have done if he was against a back four, aggressive in the tackle with more players behind. Luke says, Do you think the injuries to Ariola have been brought on by inviting teams on, similar to the pens we're giving away? I don't think so, Luke. Um, the, the injury to Ariola was just a groin injury picked up uh, against Newcastle, and we weren't, we weren't under the cosh against Newcastle, in my opinion, in the first half. In the first half, which is where Ariola sustained that injury, it, we weren't under pressure too much. It was quite an, a balanced game, I thought, in the first 45 at St. James's Park. Second half, I have an issue with, but the first half where the injuries picked up. So it, it's a no. But anyway, right, community preview. Thank you very much to everybody. But Barry and Kerwin Ord and Ralph win F1 and Guru. Yeah, we'll do one then. Let me speak to Gons and we'll see if we can, when we can rustle one up and we'll put it up so people can get involved in the. In the live chat, Luke says, "About time we got some luck at this stage. I couldn't care less. I want European football, so win at all costs." I agree. I agree. It's all about getting the win. Navidis says, uh, "Despite the win, terrible performance by us, which is not good. We're facing must-win every game. Chelsea with two games behind, with five points apart. Newcastle and Villa games really hurting us. There, there, there is an element of that. Um, I'm just like I said. Hopefully, results go in our favour today, and we can." We can uh, we can be good. Uh, Benji wants normally to talk about F one. Don't worry, Benji. I don't watch it. I don't. Football's the only sport I watch. I'm a part time, a part time viewer of tennis and darts, but that's it. I won't watch F one. Don't really watch rugby. Never watch cricket or golf. I say never watched it. I put. I tried sometimes with a friend who wants to watch it for whatever reason. 
I just can't do it. So anyway, there, there you go. Right then, this Thursday, this Thursday, there's an event on at Hackney Wick. We are doing our first ever Hammers Chat live show. Myself and Gonzo will be live on a little stage for half an hour to 40 minutes. I'm a bit nervous, but you can join us if you want on Thursday. Doors open at 5.30. We will begin our show around about 7 p.m. And then at half past quarter to eight, we'll stop. And at eight o'clock on the big screen will be the Bayer Leverkusen West Ham game. This is being held in Hackney Wick. There is a big general admission area, which is downstairs. If you came to the final, um, the Conference League final event, it's the exact same venue, the same setup, but just that we're doing a live show. Because right? the final, we didn't do anything because it was a final. There was a big atmosphere. We didn't have to. But because it's the first like of a quarter final, we're going to try it. And um, we've got, we're have got we hoping to have about 100 people in the Hammers chat room. You can get your tickets over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Hammers chat. Uh, tickets are £20 general admission. However, if you're a Hammers chat patron, you save a fiver, so it's £15. And you will get up into the Hammers chat room. Now, if you want in the Hammers chat room for the live show, you have to buy a ticket for the Hammers chat section. Tomorrow at 5 p.m., Monday at 5 p.m., they will go on sale on YouTube. We will start promoting it on YouTube, and tickets will be 20 quid if there's any left. If the patrons have left any for people to come along. Should West Ham make it to the semi final and final, we will be doing the same event again for their way legs. And whoever buys a ticket for this one, the quarter final, will be given priority and a discount for those tickets as well. So, a bit of an incentive to join up. And just for context, the Hammers chat room for the final of the Conference League sold out in half an hour to patrons only. This, they went like that. There was people buying tickets off people. There was a black market for, there was tickets touting going on. There was no profits being made. There was ticket touting. There was a black market for tickets to the Hammers chat room for the Conference League final. So there'll be in demand for the final should we get there. So but if you come to the quarter final, you will be guaranteed a ticket for the semi final and the final as well. But I'd love to meet as many of you there on thursday patreon.com for us as hammers chat but like i said tomorrow monday at 5 p.m we'll put the link up on youtube and you can grab a ticket and come and join us our first ever live show i am nervous i'm nervous already so it's different talking on a webcam in your spare bedroom is a hell of a different to do it on the stage it's not something i've ever done before so um yeah ah anyway right hopefully see some of you there on thursday Please, please come along. Don't want to be doing it to just five people. That'd be a bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? Infinitely said, surprise, set piece coach to instruct the player blocking the goalkeeper to get back on side if not being marked. Um, do Wolves have one? I don't know. We don't have one. Not every team has a set piece coach. Some of them do, obviously. Arsenal's one, that wee Spaniard. He's um, he's very prominent, isn't he? Lots of teams have, have one. Liverpool have a throw-in coach, hell. But we we don't we don't have a set piece coach. Um, always baffles me that we don't have one. But they don't want one. Um, I just just find it a bit uh, a bit strange that you'd buy a set piece specialist in James Ward Prowse. You've got some of the others that are damn good at whipping in a set piece like Jack Bowen and Anna Creswell. And we don't have somebody whose job is to get the most out of those situations. I'm not going to lie when I see. Arsenal taking corners. There's a bit of me that thinks, why don't we have these kind of... I do feel our tactics is Ward Prowse, just hit it into a good area. The rest of you, attack that area. Um, but anyway, I don't know if Wolves have one. Ralph, if they're letting Johnson go, do you think Steyden has a replacement lined up? It doesn't make sense. No, I don't think so. I don't think so, because I think they're trying to get him to stay. I don't think we've given up on... Ben Johnson remaining at West Ham yet. Yeah, I think they're still hoping that he will sign a contract, but I hope he does, but I don't think he will. I think it's going to cost millions to replace him. Um, to, to let him walk out the door for free is just ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, I think I'd be saying to him, look, come sign this deal. This is Sufal's next season, Sufal's last season with us. We will be buying a new right back in 2026, but you've got a year to get to file out the team and make that spot your own. I, I, I'd i really like Johnson to sign a new contract, especially if we're in European football next season because of the way the homegrown and the club trained players work. So I've covered it a hundred times. I know pe some people don't mind me talking about it, but other people dislike it. So I try not to go on about it too much, believe it or not. One guy even accused me of making up the homegrown rule. I mean... 
of all the things to make up, it's, it's not like a, it's not like it's a clickbait title, is it? I can, I don't know, I can make up a rumor and like David Moyes has told Sullivan that he's quitting and that's that, right? That would get views, but to, to make up something which is, oh, by the way, there's a homegrown quota required for registering squads in European football. Bit of a strange thing to make up, wouldn't it? Um, what's the benefit of that, anyway? Ralph, no, I don't think we've got a replacement lined up. I'd like to think we have a replacement for every player in the squad lined up. I'm not sure we do. I I, I think we... Ideally, that's how you go along things, wouldn't it? You'd, you'd be watching players of every position so that if a bid comes in for one of your players unexpectedly, you can sell him because you know who you're going to go get. You just don't know what's going to happen with players. It's, you know, pre-season... We've been done a couple of times, haven't we? Um, to, like the pre-season prior, a girl got injured for a long period of time, so we had to go get Teal Kerr quickly. Before that, we've had Ryan Fredericks get injured. It was, I don't think it was pre-season. It was early on in the season, though, and, and because we went and got Vladimir Sufal that week. We've had Alan Creswell get injured and we had to go get Arthur Masuaku. Um, so quite often, even in pre-seasons, a player will get injured like that and will be out for a large period of time. You have to act. Therefore, you should know who you want to go get because that guy's out for six months. You might as well just rule him out for the season and bring someone in that you've been eyeing up anyway. In my opinion. Um, Brendan said, I think Johnson might get the contract as he's being played. Mubama may as well be a cardboard cutout. I do think there's a bit of a... A correlation, though, that if a player won't sign, the manager might think, well, I'm not going to use you. But also, the manager won't play him. The player might think, oh, I'm definitely going now. It gets into, this is why when players enter the last 12 months of their contract, and a manager enters his, the last 12 months of his contract, I do think situations like this arise. And it, it can get ugly very quickly. It almost get a bit petty from, from both parties. I'm not signing because I'm not playing. And on the other side, well, I'm not playing you because you won't sign. Well, something's got to give, hasn't it? Um, so I, th I think there's, I think both parties are to blame. Mark says, irony is, if we didn't sub Suchek off, the Kilman goal would probably wouldn't have happened as he would have headed the corner away. The same thing happened at Luton when we had that handball um, scare. Glenn would rather let Sufal go. We've already triggered his deal. Um, so he's here till next summer at the very earliest. Uh, whether or not we give him a new one, we'll have to wait and see. Steve says, as bad as you can appear, we do miss Suchek's headers when he's not on the pitch. And Davida says, Kilman is somebody we must go get. I thought he had a good game, um, Kilman. I thought I, I do think he had a really good game, actually. Um, in terms of uh, an addition, to West Ham saying, come get me in the summer. Not that he wants to, by the way. I'm not saying that what's what he's doing. He plays like that every week. But if West Ham were watching him thinking, is this the guy we want to go get? I don't think he's done himself any harm. Dean said, am I the only person that thinks we're going to beat Leverkusen and beat the... No, I think there's quite a lot of people. It's very, something very West Ham about it, isn't it? Um, Andy and says, a scrutiny directed at the Disallowed Wolves goal has been intensified by its timing. View from behind the goal shows Fabianski's view is completely obstructed by an offside player. Glenn said, I think our front four will be a first for Barrier that they've come up against this season. And Charlie said, surprise, Johnson didn't sign a pre-contract with another club. When's the date, though? When's the date that um, you can do it domestically? Let me let me have a quick Google. Domestic uh, Bosman ruling pre-contract date. Let's see what it says. When when is the date that players can do it? I know it's the first of January for going abroad. So if you wanted to sign for a German club, you can do it on the first of January. But that's not the case for domestic transfers. It's not the end of his contract. Um, it's round about now, isn't it? For some reason, I think it's like May, late, late April, May time or something like that. It went, I don't know. Someone someone should know. When is it? Someone in the live chat tell me. I've Googled it and nothing's coming up. Um, nothing obvious. There's lots of articles, but I, I, I'm live on YouTube. I don't have time to read a whole entire article um, regarding the, the dates. This is where somebody that plays football manager will know because it'll be on there, won't it? Um, 
Anyway, I don't know. I know it's the 1st of January for going abroad, but in terms of domestic, it's, it's different. Um, Liam says, Mav Palace's Zoom partnership is starting to look really solid. Agree, agree, big agree. First half was a disgrace. Also really happy with the win, but relying on two set pieces again. Um, first of July, that's when they move. That's when it moves. But you can agree it prior to that infinitely. I think it's only a couple of months, though, but it's not. I don't think you have to. I could be wrong. I don't think you have to wait till the 1st of July before you can start negotiating. I think you can do it soon-ish, I think, or maybe already now, but not that long ago. Uh, I don't know. I, I do not know what it is. I'm going to find out, though. I was hoping someone would know, but nobody knows. Hammer 99 says, Pat Ketter annoyed him yesterday. Went down too easy through tantrums when he didn't get them constantly. If he doesn't give one, he will give the others. I completely agree. Um, he, um, he, he, sorry, I've just read Luke's comment. He, he really annoyed me yesterday, actually, as well. I thought he was terrible in the first half. In the second half, I don't think he was much better. Fantastic penalty. But even the penalty we won, Paqueta gives the ball away really easily and just throws his arms up. And it's Emerson that comes running over and wins the ball back and then tries to cross it. We get the penalty. So I thought Paqueta was poor yesterday. Goal aside, I, I think he did very little. Um, but, yeah, he, he, he frustrated me. He, he did frustrate me as well. Um here we go, Master. Here we go, Master and Liam. Thank you very much. Liam says it's a month before the end of the contract from the same country. The Master says Football Manager is dated. A lot of people say quoting a computer game. Football Manager's rulings or things like this is very 100% accurate. Um, whether you agree with their player ability ratings or what, but the rules of football is still the rules of football, regardless of whether it's a computer game or not. Um, but anyway, one month before, so the that would be the end of May. He can now um, agree, or first of July, first of June, he can sign a new contract with a domestic club, Crystal Palace. Charlie, do we need a set piece coach? I don't think it does you any harm, Charlie. Um, I don't think it does you any harm. I think we need a throw in coach beforehand. There was actually someone. I, I just didn't. There was somebody that his job, I kid you not, his job is a freelance throw-in specialist. That is his job. And he's been employed by various English clubs prior. Um, not mainly foreign clubs. He does a lot of work in Turkey, for example. But he will, a club will hire him for a month or two weeks or whatever. He'll go in, he will evaluate how a club takes their throw-ins, what they do from throw-ins, and then he will sort of present it to the club as to what they could do better and what they're not doing. Because his, I remember him saying, I, I, I can't remember the number, okay? I can't actually, just so I don't embarrass myself too much. Let me just check yesterday. So yesterday, West Ham had, so for score app, quite a handy one. Um, West Ham had 24 throw-ins yesterday. So his thing was, if you get 24 throw-ins, imagine not having a plan for 20. You got 24 periods of the game where you get the ball, there you go. There's the ball. Imagine not having a plan for what to do with that. So you wouldn't do that with corners or free kicks. So why with throw-ins do you just discard them? And I remember speaking to him, and I was going to do like a bit of a QA and a with him on Patreon, um, but I just decided, maybe incorrectly, possibly correctly, that there probably wouldn't be much demand for chatting to a throw-in specialist. But basically, I was kind of... <laughs> Not hiring, but I was basically going to say to him, would you mind watching West Ham for the game? I'm assuming he does it anyway. I just write down your notes on throw-ins and present them to us and get his thoughts on West Ham's throw-ins. Anyway, I'm a proper geek sometimes. I'm tired. I'm proper nerdy. I'm aware of that. But this sort of stuff intrigues me. So, yes, we need a bloody throwing coach, I think. Um. Glenn, is it one ticket per person? No, patrons can buy as many as they want using the discount, but the lead booker must be a patron. So if you're a patron and you want to buy four tickets, you can buy four tickets. You'll get £5 off all four tickets, but the lead booker must be a patron in order to get £5 off. And then tomorrow we will put them up on YouTube and you can have as many tickets as you want. Hopefully everybody turns up. While the, the revenue is one thing, but to pay for our costs, um, we want people there. We we would like people there. If we get enough people, we're gonna have we're gonna do a little bit of a giveaway. We'll bring a couple of items with us and do a giveaway. But it depends on 
how many people because we don't want to run the event at a loss. That's what we don't want to do. Um, right then, Liam says, one thing I noticed with having Johnson on is he allows us to bring the ball up the pitch. I completely agree. I thought his passing, his dribbling was really good, but I thought his passing was really good as well. Um, I think it might have been the penalty. Johnson just zips it into Antonio, who turns and gives it, funny enough, gives, yeah, it was the penalty. Antonio gets it. I think he might pass something. It goes back out to Ben Johnson, and then he gives it to Caduce. Um, it wasn't a pen. It was the disallowed goal. That's what it was. But Johnson starts to move, pass. He moves, gets it back, gives it to Caduce. Cross comes in. Emerson heads it in. Goal is allowed, but Johnson's involved in the build-up. I thought he had a good second half. Um, right then, well, I'm going to start rounding this one up because I've been going for half an hour. Thank you to everybody. Um, I'll do. I'll summarise my thoughts in just a minute. But before I do that, please do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. It helps out the channel a lot more than you can think. And please subscribe if you're new to Hammers Chat. And like I said, tickets, Hammers Chat, patreon.com for us, Hammers Chat. Links in the description. I'll pin it in the comment section below as well. But they will go on sale tomorrow at 5 p.m. to everybody. We'll start promoting it and we'll share the link to everybody tomorrow. Um, all right. Thank you, Robert. Robert's quoting the rules here. Any player looking to move from one English team to another as a soon-to-be free agent can only open talks a month before their contract expires. Well, there you go. That's the official ruling. Whether they stick to that or not, I'm reluctant to believe so. I would expect Ben Johnson's agents or representatives have had unofficial off the record conversations with agents representing other clubs i would imagine so and he knows what's on the table from other clubs such as i don't know if any club crystal palace was to offer ben johnson a contract he would probably know what that club crystal palace would be offering him at this point and it's probably better than what he's getting at west ham as well as as game time that's what he wants Anyway, in regards to yesterday, I thought the first half was ridiculously bad. I thought there was a massive element of luck there. I think David Moyes got off with it, but we were much better in the second half. I thought it was a game of two halves. I thought we got better with every substitution. So the first two, Johnson and Antonio, come on. I thought we got better. And weirdly, when Bowen went off and Craswell came on, I thought we got better again. For two reasons. First of all, the shape had changed, which brought out better performances from Emerson and Johnson was already impressing me. He just moved further up and started and became a wing back. I thought those two were crucial to us in the second half. And then um second of all, they I've lost my chain of thought now. But uh, in the in second half we were the better team. The substitutions worked in our favor both times both sort of forced a little bit. But I think if you have to make a sub at halftime, it suggests that something's gone wrong with your initial lineup. And I think there was a lot wrong. With it. I say a lot wrong with the initial lineup. There was one thing, no Mikhail Antonio. Um, we got away with it yesterday. Um, I still think we were lucky with the VAR calls, but I don't care. I struggled to have any sympathy because we've been done by VAR recently. And you know what? There's only six penalty games to go. I'm quite confident we're going to get done again by VAR. We need to do better, though. Uh, Fulham next weekend is going to be tough, especially with Leverkusen on Thursday and Fulham on Sunday. We're going to need to be better if we want to beat Fulham. Um, if we want European football, though, next season, we're going to have to. A, a point's not good enough next weekend. We need to keep winning games. Hopefully, results go in our favour today. If Liverpool win 4-0, we go sixth. Sixth with six games to go. Not too shabby, is it? Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Much appreciate it. I will catch up with you tomorrow. See you then.